If you're ready to walk in authority, help finding your purpose and destiny, empowering you to live today. The suke, which is the temporal. When we talk about the suke life, we talk about temporal life. It's not the uh, zo life of God. It's not the zoe life of God, but it's the suke. It's that temporal life. Unfortunately, it's what most people really look at. Most people really feed. Most people uh, 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 spend more time paying attention to the temporal life. The only problem is that oftentimes we continue to rely on that which continues to defeat us. In other words... While we must eat every day, we need clothes, we need raiment. Sunday's message is an excellent message as we taught on it. We're in Mark, Matthew rather, chapter 6, and I was talking about how he led up to the kingdom of God, having a kingdom mindset. And he compared literally, Jesus literally took the suke life mindset and life of the temporal man versus the zo life, the eternal life, which is kingdom minded. The only difference is those that operate in the suke are, 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 are earthly minded, are what we refer to in the Bible as carnally minded. Those that operate uh, according to the kingdom are kingdom minded, are more eternally minded. In other words, we, we tend to, to, to have faith, not just for what we're going, going through now, but we have faith in, in uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, when we talk about the mind, the anoa, uh, this word mind deals with the faculty, the understanding, the feelings, the understanding in general, the mind, the spirit, the way of thinking, the feelings, and the process of thoughts, good or bad. And we'll look at this in a little bit more depth, but I want to make a statement um, that Jesus made reference to, and this is what blew the Pharisees and the Sadducees away and really upset them because of the fact when he said it, they knew exactly what he was alluding to. Um, how many of us remember when Moses was told of God to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go? Remember that? Remember what, uh, what God told uh, uh, Moses when Moses asked, he says, well, who shall I say sent me? And you remember his response, tell him that I am, that I am sent you. Well, what Jesus was telling them when they asked him, who are you? And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then they said, no, tell us, who are you? And then Jesus said, I am that I am. That, well, that just messed them all up because he just went ahead and told them that he was God. Because the Hebrews knew exactly who I am that I am was. And so for Jesus to say, I am that I am, is tell him that that was his name, that's who he was. And so he said, the one that Moses spoke of, I am he. Now, I want you to understand something with your mind, and I'm trying to get you to, to see uh, yourself in faith in your day-to-day -day life as to operating in the zo life of God, the eternal life according to kingdom principles versus as temporal principles. And you're going to find out when I operate from a kingdom mindset that I'm going to be more prosperous, I'm going to be more healthy, I'm going to be at more peace, and God will never ever fail me. And the end result is because I'm trusting and relying on God and not myself. Now, now we say we do that, but there is a practical way of doing that and a practical uh, result of it. For instance, when Jesus said, I am that I am, what he was not saying was that I am yesterday. I am what I am that I was. I am that I will be. He was saying that I am that I am. In other words, he was saying that I'm everything that I need to be in the present state. The word of God says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So my thought process is very important to my existence process. How I'm going to exist is based largely upon how I think and how I operate in my life. And Christians often get spooky. It ain't nothing spiritual about it. They get spooky. And they get spooky because they do not put their now faith to work. Yes, faith is the, 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 uh, 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 of that which is hoped for, evidence of that thing which is seen. It's that hope presence or that hope substance. But I must come to a place in my life 
I must have a mindset to understand that it is now all right. Uh, I am that I am. While we know God is eternal, but what he was speaking of in the human realm when he said that I am what I am and that I am is that I am complete in my present state. Faith is not just hoping for something to come. Faith is absolutely content in where you are that what is to come will not look any different than what you hope for right now. See, because if I'm of the mindset that what I am hoping for is, is different than where I am, then it's not real faith. I'm not operating in the I am that I am mindset. And the temporal will overtake you if you don't. Worry will consume you if you don't. What you see will become bigger than what you hope for. And so therefore, faith is not really in operation. And this is why it says in the word of God that in the latter days, many shall fall away from the faith. They got folks still going to church, but they're not in the faith. You got pastors still preaching, but they themselves are not in the faith. You got uh, uh, leaders in, in, in the church still leading, but they themselves are not in faith because life, the cares of life has overtaken them. And that they really are not living in the I am that I am state. Am I making sense? And you got to understand, this pleases God. When I operate in the I am that I am state, it pleases him. I'm going to tell you, if you want God to move in your life, start acting like right now every need is met. It don't even take faith to act like every need is met after it got met. Come on. Amen. Amen. You know, if I'm believing God for a car and you hand me the keys to the car, I'm excited, but I don't need faith anymore. I got the car. I'm not, it'd be crazy. You know, I'm driving down the street in the car and the key's in there and ignition's been turned and foot's on the gas and I'm rolling down the street talking about, I can't wait to get this car. There's something wrong with that. But see, I've got to have a mindset that God has already blessed me with the car before I get the car. I've got to act like I'm fully content. Before I get it. See, God doesn't want your praises and your thanksgiving after you got it. He really wants you to give it to him before you have it. Because now you're agreeing with the I am that I am. In other words, you're operating in a mindset that pleases God. Hallelujah. I think we ought to have joy for the journey, not joy for the destination. Anybody can be joyful, uh, 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 and really that's not joy, it's happiness. Anybody can be happy after it's happened, but can you be joyful along the way? Joyful is much deeper than happiness. Oh, Lord God. Mm. Go with me to John. John chapter uh, 10, St. John 10. I want you to take a look, look at the word in this, put some word on it. Say amen when you got into John chapter 10. Listen to what he says uh, in verse 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but for the steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that you might have life. He's talking about that Zoe life that we're speaking of. And they that might have it might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now, what Jesus is actually talking about, I am the life. And so he says, when I call you and you come and we partake, we're in covenant what God is literally saying is that my mindset changes about my conditions. Notice the comparison concerning the temple. The thief comes not but for the kill, steal, and destroy. Well, what is he trying to kill, steal, and destroy? Your mindset. If he can steal your dreams and your visions, you become stagnated. At that point, you're doing nothing more than existing. Let me tell you, Jesus said life is more than raiment and food and eat and drink. The worst thing that can happen to you is not that you lose your home. 
And, those are, and these CDs go all over the country. And so if you back east, you know some family member, those of you, let me, the most worst thing that can happen to you is not losing your home. It's not uh, losing your car or any of this. You say, well, Pastor, you've never been in that situation. Yes, I was. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, old three, we had some fires that came through. I don't know if you remember the old Irwindale fires. And they were evacuating us. There was fire, there was fire uh, blazes literally 40 feet high on the backside of my fence. And, and, and those of you listening by tape and hear me right now, you only do it, don't, don't do what I did if, if your faith ain't there. But God told me to stay. And he told me to speak to the fire as a witness to those in my community. Now, half of them in my community would hardly ever speak to me, but they all know in my community I'm the pastor. And they, they during that time, all came up to, to my house wanting to know why fire engines and everybody else was out there. They wanted to know what I was going to do. And I said, well, I've been waiting on it. I'm going to speak to it. So right above my house, literally right straight out, I can sit dead in, in a lawn chair and look straight up in this Cucamonga Peak. There was a fireball that ran, rolled down Cucamonga Peak. And as it was rolling down, it was literally gathering material. It was gathering bushes and trees. And this thing was just huge. At one point, it hit a dip and it just flew up in the air. And I began to speak to the fire. And the fire engines and everything, they were evacuating everybody. And I began to speak to it. And the thing just disintegrated. Right there, my neighbor saw this. It, it just disintegrated, and it just went right beyond our homes and everything and just dissipated into the air and just dropped down in ashes. I told my wife when it, this hurricane was going on, and, and, and which turned into a tropical storm and, and whatnot, and just, just a regular storm at the end of the day. But I said, there ought to be believers on the sea, on the ocean, speaking to that thing. Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus spoke to the waves between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning. He was walking out on the sea. And remember, they thought he was a ghost. And then he said, and then Jesus spoke to him. He says, if you, if you be the Lord, bid us to come unto you. And he bid Peter, and Peter came. First, they thought he was a ghost. But notice, later on, as they walked on the water, they found that they could do something that otherwise they couldn't do. There's a whole lot we can do as believers that otherwise we can't do. I took a whole different mindset uh, from 2005 uh, as, as a result of, of Hurricane Katrina and watching the devastation, and the Lord gave me a revelation. The church needs to be prepared to combat disasters. Remember Jesus sleep on a boat, and the disciples said, care not that we perish. Now you got to understand who was asking them this question. These were fishermen. If anyone knew that this was a devastating storm, guess who would have knew? They would have. You know, as a contractor, I get up all the time watching the weather because based upon what I'm doing has a lot to do with what the weather is. As a fisherman, I'm sure they track the weather. Amen? I bet back in that day, though, they ain't have any instruments. I bet they knew the barometric pressure and everything else. But, but my point is this. God told them to speak to it. There's a, there's a story of Smith Wigglesworth. There was a huge storm going on, and he went out to the sea, and he spoke to the storm, and it literally, the whole storm just stopped right there. It stopped literally right there at the borders of the sea. This is one man. You say, come on, pastor. I am. We have authority. But we have to come, what does this have to do with our lesson? It has a whole lot to do. We have to come to the now state of believing, as Jesus said, believe right now. I have to believe right now. Thank God for hope down the line, but we have a life to live. We have a witness to give right now. We have a witness to give right now. And as sad as it is to say, I bet you, I bet you right now, there are folk praying they got houses full of prayers, prayer, uh, 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 prayers going on back east. Churches is going to be packed out this Sunday. Are you listening to what I'm saying? But watch this. We need to come to him right now in I am that I am state. We need to come to him, watch this, before the fire gets started. See, if my faith wasn't where my faith needed to be when that fire was coming down, then watch this. 
I wouldn't have been able to speak against the, uh, uh, against the fire. And before I spoke to it, God had already told me that morning to run around the property and yell out seven times. Are you with me? At the time, there was a woman living next door. Her husband was always, wasn't really her husband, but anyway, he was always gone. And uh, she saw me out there yelling and running around. Well, when the fire broke out and all this stuff was happening, uh, one of the neighbors asked her what she was going to do. She'd call her, the guy and whatever and this and that. And she said, no, I'm going to do whatever he do. <laughs> so, watch this. Don't be afraid to let people think that you're crazy. At the end of the day, they know something going on. They know something going on. My wife came down, that next, came down the next morning. They were all outside in the front of my, front of my yard. I was getting ready. To, we, we was men, I, I, church was in Pomona at the time. I'm getting ready to go to Pomona, and they all in my front yard want to know what I'm doing. I said, I'm going to church. Y'all can come if you want. Well, what are we going to do? Why are you going? I said, I suggest you pray. See, I wasn't going to put God off. I wasn't going to put God off because of the tragedy. I wasn't going to put God off because of the devastation. Why? Because my faith lies in the midst of who he is. It lies in the presence of I am that I am. Not that I am going to become. Not that I am that I was. But I am that I am. Are you listening to me? Are you who you need to be now? Are you now who you are? Are you trying to become somebody? Are you waiting for next Sunday for your breakthrough? Are you going to give it up two weeks from now? When I get this right, then I'm going to do this. And Lord, I'm going to give you this when this happens. And Lord, after this bill gets paid or after that mortgage or how about this one? Lord, if you do this, then I'll do that. No, God says, you're going to be I am. Are you listening to me? I, I, I shared with the congregation uh, a few weeks ago, I was praying, and I, 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 and I, 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 it just, I wasn't tracking. And I said, Lord, well, well, if you do that, I'll make sure, Lord, I promise you I'll do this. And, 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 it, and I normally would never pray a prayer like that. And God says, well, I ain't going to do it for you no way. And I said, why not, Lord? He says, I don't need you to make no promises. If, if I do something, you're going to do something? I'll find somebody to do it for me and, and don't have to do anything for me. <sighs> Why? Because a person ought to do something for God and not expect anything because they're in the I am that I am state, knowing that they're already, their needs are already met, that, Lord, you ain't got to do nothing. You know what I have need of before I even pray. And I don't need to bargain with you. I'm going to just be I am that I am to you that you are to me. We have nothing to bargain with anyway. you talking about you was going to give your house over to me. You and your house is going to serve the Lord. God, God says, this is a storm came. Where, where your house at now? You ain't even got nothing to bargain with. Oh, Lord, you better catch it. Jesus talked about it. There was two houses. One was built on a rock and one was built on sand. The one that was built on sand blew away. The one that's built on a rock stood. And the word of God says, and the one that was built on the sand fell and great was the fall thereof. I submit to you. The storm didn't make the difference. The storm just brought out the difference that was already there. See, tragedy and devastation isn't going to make the difference in our life. It just manifests the difference. And I don't get it. I, I mean, I don't get it. And I'm not just speaking the life with, but across the, across the world, especially what we just saw done. You think this place be, and, and every church on Bible study, would be packed out tonight. Just to come giving thanksgiving for no other reason. My Lord Jesus, what will it take? I'll tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take a devastation to where they have to call out on, on the name of the Lord. Look what this, this thing has done. It's done let, let enemy politicians get along, walking together, complimenting one another. You let, you, let, you let devastation occur. You don't know who you're going to share your peanut butter and jelly sandwich with. <laughs> if they got some water and you got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, we're going to bargain. We're we going we gonna to make it happen, Captain. <laughs> are you listening to me? You don't care what color they are, what side of the fence they were on, or where they come from. 
What if we serve God with such an urgency and urgency in our lives? What if we served him like that every day? I'll tell you what, we wouldn't have a need. We wouldn't have a need in our lives. A lot of stuff we pray about because we wasn't about what we should have been about. Let's, uh, let's move on. The purpose of becoming spiritually minded is to serve God. It's to serve God. Go with me to Chronicles 28 and 9. Chronicles 28 and 9. God has a purpose in your life and God wants to bless you. Are you there? First Chronicles 28 and 9. Amen. I got it up there on the screen if you don't see it. See that big one in front of it? All right. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing what? A perfect heart and a what? In other words, basically, let me break that down. What are you saying with a perfect heart? In other words, you know what pleases him. And then what a willing mind means and do what it is that please him. First, I got to know what pleases God and then just simply do what pleases him. Know what pleases him and just do it. Look up. I want you to get this. Right after that, you ain't got no more needs. Now, what I didn't say was that you didn't have any trials. You didn't have any tribulations. You didn't have any people you had to contend with in relationships. But let me tell you something, that relationship could stay the same, but if you change, it really doesn't matter what that relationship is like if you're different. The problem why we have such a challenge in certain relationships, it's not because they won't change, it's because we won't. Oh, come on, somebody. The only reason they still bother you because they know they can. <laughs> folk figure out they don't bother you no more oh no there's some powerful stuff even the devil will leave you alone he'll resist you and flee if you resist him isn't that what your bible say resist the devil and he gonna do what buck up that's translated move and so what he is actually saying here understand what pleases God and serve him with all your mind for the Lord searches what he searches what but now he don't just search your heart. You know, how many people you heard say this? Well, the Lord, he know my heart. And he know what you're thinking too. Here, let's see. He searches the heart and what? All the, and the, stop. Well, you know, I would, and I'm doing the best I can. The Lord know my heart. And he know what you're thinking. He know what you imagine. He know why you ain't doing what you should do. So if we're going to quote it, let's quote all of it. He doesn't just know my heart. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows my imaginations. Amen. So it does no good that you pray to get along and you say, I forgive them. But then your imagination said, if they can just fall down the stairs, Lord, and just. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Uh, see, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so your heart and that imagination just don't go together. But if they just happen to trip over the vacuum cleaner cord and they get wrapped up and <laughs> if, the, if they just slip on a toy at the top and, and then turn around, Lord, but I forgive them in Jesus' name. I lift them up. <laughs> See, something wrong with that. Lord, I serve you, but you don't come to church. Church is a corporate area that he said that we ought to come serving. I have been um, outside of when I first started the ministry. I'm going to I'm gonna have to admit the first couple of years because I was still working as a biomedical engineer, a senior system analyst for Phillips Medical System, and I traveled all over the world. So there was during that time, during that season before I was able to break away from the company, I missed a few Bible studies. 
and a few Sundays uh, when I had to go on long-term assignment. But after that two years, um, since 1992, um, and 20 years I have not missed, I would say it's safe to say, Deke, you can vouch for this, you've been with me since then. I, I don't think I've missed more than seven Bible studies. And that was either because there was a death in the family. Um, I think a couple may have been for vacation. Um, but mostly of them, there were deaths in the family. Um, Sunday service. I've never missed a Sunday service unless I just wasn't in the state. And I think I may have missed probably three Sunday services in 20 years. How many of you missed? You say, well, pastor, you the pastor. The three that I did miss, I showed up in church at somebody's service even when I was outside the state. But one. In 22 years, I've missed one time of being in church one Sunday in 22 years. I say that is not just because I love the Lord, but I purposed it in my heart with my mind. See, there are certain things you can have in your heart, but what you purpose to do, your mind has to agree with. Now, I say that you say, well, pastor, you're a pastor, you ought to. I know a lot of pastors, that ain't their testimony. And I'm not trying to say that I'm all that because of it. What I'm simply trying to say is that I have a busy life too. I listen to some people and they give excuses as to why they can't do things. If you leave yourself open not to do something, the devil will make sure you have that opportunity not to do it. Watch this, including being blessed. Watch this. You will not get blessed by accident. How many of you can stand a blessing in your life? I'm trying to help you right now. And he wants to do it with every one of us. Watch this. If you get blessed, it's going to be because you got blessed on purpose. And God wants to purposely bless you. I mean, everyone that's listening to me right now, God wants to purposely bless you. And you can get delivered to have a mindset that matches your heart set. Because what I am persuaded, most people in the body of Christ, they love God for real. But they have not matured mentally to cause their mental thoughts and their mental apparatus to match up with their heart. So therefore, they miss out on their blessings. They miss out on their divine appointments. They miss out on all of the great things that God desires for them. And it ain't got nothing to do with God not wanting to do it. You can get delivered. Deacon Mayberry got delivered. No, really. Now, I can say this because Deke and I, we, we real close. We know each other. But Deke, he has the same testimony that I do about Bible study in church. Deke, wouldn't you say you pretty much ain't missed many? I can't remember you missing. If you missed a Bible study, I want to know what's going on. A church service, something going on. And usually you always know maybe he went on vacation or something like that, but same testimony. So I'm not trying to say it's just Pastor Chris. See, when something gets settled, not just in your heart, but in your mind. As a matter of fact, by the time we get to the New Testament, he says you serve him with your mind. In other words, it's such a mental dispensation without the mind, it won't even happen. Now, I remember Deacon, I say he got delivered because, you know, when we first started, and this was like when we were in elementary school, and Deacon, he, he had an addiction. He was addicted to Sunday football. Deke literally showed up. I'm telling on you, Deke. Deke literally, I'm preaching. I ain't never seen nothing like this in all my life. He creeped in the church, held up a finger with his sweats and a T-shirt on and dropped his tithe envelope and went right back out to go see the game. 
I said, in the name of Jesus, NFL, come out of him. 